Let's get back to the major chip news this morning. Intel announcing that it will be spending $20 billion on two new chip plants in Arizona. Wall Street and investors are cheering the news right now. That stock is up more than 5% in the pre-market, giving a big boost to the Dow as well. Joining us right now to talk more about it is Vivek Arya, Bank of America Security Senior Semiconductor Analyst. And Vivek, I'm going to throw a few things at you because I think you have a different take than the street's reaction right now. You're, you're looking at this a little more skeptically, aren't you? Yeah, thanks, Becky, for having me. Um, first, I think we have to commend Intel for thinking outside the box. Uh, I think the new CEO is is a visionary. He comes with a lot of uh, credibility, first-hand experience in the industry. And it'll be really good to see a lot more semiconductor production onshore in the U.S. because it's such a critical industry. But having said all that, we are very skeptical of success here for three reasons. First, there is no evidence that Intel has caught up in terms of leading edge uh, manufacturing uh, technology. Number two, this outsource manufacturing or the foundry business is a very different business than where, what Intel is into right now. It's a very service oriented business and you already have an 800 pound gorilla Taiwan semiconductor who controls 60% of the world's market share and probably 90% of the profits because they are so good at this uh, business. And in the time frame that Intel wants to uh, develop new fabs in Arizona, TSMC will also have a similar fabs in uh, Arizona. So Intel is just starting late in this industry, which is already very well developed. And third and very important reason, you know, what was lost in all the excitement uh, and news yesterday is the fact that Intel guided uh, 2021 below consensus. Intel is perhaps the only semiconductor company where sales are going to be down this year. Earnings are going to be down 14%. Free cash flow is going to be down 50%. And they're attributing this to supply constraints. But, you know, the entire industry is dealing with supply constraints. And yet their main competitor, AMD, is able to show 37 percent growth um, this year. So for a number of reasons, uh, execution risk uh, and just uh, continued share losses is why we still are cautious on the stock. You know, one, one thing that makes this look a little sweeter to a lot of people, though, is what the Biden administration is doing. They're now looking at the potential of offering incentives to companies that are willing to make chips here in the United States because of all the problems we're seeing in the supply chain right now. Is that something that if there is some sweetener in the pot from the U.S. government could change your mind? Yeah, I think that will definitely help uh, the financial uh, equation here. But one has to realize that uh, developing chips for other customers is a fundamentally very different business. It's a very capital intensive uh, business, uh, which is already well established with one large player who will also be in Arizona at the same time and presumably perhaps asking for similar uh, incentives. And there are a number of other smaller players. So it's, it's not a new industry that Intel is getting into. It's a well-established uh, industry. Secondly, it's a very capital intensive uh, industry. Um, mm. So if I look at the last decade, Intel's uh, capital intensity has been about 18 to 20% of sales, right? But when I look at mm -hmm. the foundry industry, the capital intensity, even when one is at a very high level of scale, capital intensity is close to 50%. Um, so those are the reasons why I think that yes, you know, uh, US government incentives would be helpful. Uh, but I don't think by themselves they are really going to make this necessarily a more profitable venture than Intel is in right now. And then the second important part is what about conflicts of interest? Let's say if a customer comes to Intel and says, help me develop a processor that helps me eliminate the need for your processor in, in the data center market. How will Intel manage that uh, relationship? I think a lot of those things are unknown. And finally, the payoff is four years away. I know we are all excited. The stock is reflecting that because it's something new and exciting. But the mm -hmm. earliest this thing will show any benefit is 2024 uh, and beyond. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.